Accomplishment is a relative concept. The yardstick by which it is measured grows longer all the time. Today, in fact, not even the sky is the limit. accomplishments, though diverse in their results, are all harmonics of one fundamental theme, the harnessing of physical power to technological skill. This concept has been the basis of our strength in the past and will be the foundation of our growth in the future. In aerospace, marine systems, electronics, and industrial resources. Energy plus engineering equals general dynamics. Problem. To build the world's most advanced attack aircraft, a plane that can go anywhere, anytime, at a moment's notice. That can climb 10 miles into the sky and fly at two and one half times the speed of sound. That can drop down to treetop level and deliver any kind of weapon with absolute precision in total darkness, supersonically. In essence, to take a vision and give it substance. It took time and talent and hard work. But today, the F-111 is a living airplane, a major element in the Air Force's arsenal of defense. The key to the F-111's combination of speed, range, and altitude is its variable sweep wing. The pilot changes the angle of the wing in flight to create the most efficient aircraft design for his mission. He can soar with wings extended for long range at moderate speeds, or sweep them back to streak through the sky at better than 1,500 miles an hour. High or low, fast or slow, the plane is more than just a tool. For the pilot, it's almost a partner. Its inertial navigation system will put the F-111 right on target after hundreds of miles of complex maneuvering. Even in zero visibility, it can penetrate deep into enemy territory undetected, using its terrain following radar to skim the earth below the vision of enemy defenses. The F-111 has flown more than 50 combat missions over North Vietnam, most of them at night or in bad weather. According to one of the pilots, the ground fire was always way behind us. They didn't know we were coming. Once over the target, the F-111 doesn't miss. The accuracy of its radar bombing system is unequal. Whatever the requirements of the mission, the F-111 can deliver the armament to do the job. It can carry nuclear or conventional bombs, missiles, rockets. 
even a rapid-fire cannon. With a few modifications, the F-111 becomes a strategic bomber or a reconnaissance plane. Tomorrow's aircraft flying today. Other challenges of flight. Other responses. The CL-84, a tilt-wing vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Its prototype has been evaluated in more than 300 flights. Production versions of this plane will now be tested by the Canadian Armed Forces. It has all the capabilities of a helicopter and can fly conventionally at 300 miles an hour. Important characteristics in difficult terrain or in combat. The CL-215, specially designed to fight forest fires. 20 in production for Quebec, 10 for France. More to come. An airborne surveillance system. It films enemy troop concentrations, then flies home again. In missilery, the shoulder-fired red eye, now in production for the Army and Marines. It lets the infantrymen strike back at low-flying aircraft. Other versions in development for the Navy and the Air Force. The standard missile, in extended and medium-range versions, continues to upgrade the Navy's defensive capabilities. The aircraft of the future will require materials of the future. Our engineers will be ready. The world's first production application of a sophisticated boron composite is flying today on the wing surface of an F-111. Problem. Total information, which by its sheer volume can paralyze totally. Every day we need more data, acquire more data, produce more data. To process greater quantities of information at ever-increasing speed, man has created the computer. Now, he must devise new ways to make readable, print, distribute, and store the flood of information generated by his fast-moving servant. The solution? Use the electron to harness the rush of electronic information. The system is called micromation, and it translates the computer's output into readable text or graphics as fast as the computer itself can produce it. With a unique cathode ray tube, a high-speed camera and microfilm, the computer's most fleeting thought can be preserved for later use. 16,000 pages of computer information. Conventional printers would need half a day to record it, and the stack of paper would be 15 feet high. With micromation, the same job takes an hour and the result can be carried in one hand. Micromation saves fortunes in time and money for banks, insurance companies, large retailers. But most important, it frees their computers to compute, full speed, full time, and not work as printing presses. We also make computers make sense in a different way. Obtaining specific answers to specific questions from a computer can be a tedious process. Most methods of recovering information are time-consuming. But with the SD-1110 system, type the question, the answer appears instantly. You can converse with a computer in real time. Other uses of the electron are as varied as the universe. Tracking. Three ships created especially to help monitor and control the Apollo moon missions. We put the whole system together. One division acted as systems manager. Others built the ships, provided radar navigation, telemetry, communication systems, and the personnel to test them. Communications. Telephone equipment for central exchanges. Offices. Homes across the nation. radio on the battlefield where communication is a life and death matter
single sideband transmitter receivers for teletype and voice. Used by all three services, units like these have provided thousands of clear, secure communication channels for our men in Vietnam under the most demanding circumstances imaginable. Two new detection systems to give our forces the fullest possible information on enemy troop movements. Easily hidden along infiltration routes or defensive perimeters, Weed broadcasts an early warning of a hostile approach. To cover larger stretches of open ground, a radar system weighing only 10 pounds. In avionics, the first microelectronic TACAN system ever to fly, installed in the F-106 interceptor. Terrain following radar, flying in the British Balkan bomber, and a unique inflatable radar antenna part of the inertial navigation system in the Navy's vigilante. In an advanced stage of development, FLAR, forward-looking, low-altitude radar. Weighing less than 100 pounds, this unit provides simultaneous ground mapping, terrain avoidance, and terrain following operations in a single package. Problem, to make an ally of the hostile sea to create a vessel that can go anywhere beneath its surface, invisible, undetectable, that can live under the sea, staying down not for hours, but for weeks and even months. Solution, the nuclear submarine. The engineering challenge was without parallel. Everything about the nuclear submarine had to be new. Power source, life support system, navigation equipment, fire control. Since delivering the world's first nuclear sub, the Nautilus, in 1955, we have built the prototype of almost every new class of nuke in the fleet including more than a third of the Navy's Polaris submarines. Modern surface ships, like submarines, require sophisticated shipbuilding techniques. At Quincy, innovations in production methods reflect our own developments in aerospace technology. Work flows in a continuous line from raw material storage to completed hull. Shapes for hull plates and other design elements are determined by computer. Cleaning and painting operations that once took days are now accomplished in hours with an automated shot blast facility. Huge ship sections, weighing up to 150 tons, are built on land and dropped into place when completed. So exact is the planning that much of the piping and wiring can be installed in advance on the ground, saving additional valuable time on the ways. The yard specializes in creating new classes of Navy ships. But now, we are also at work designing a unique new commercial cargo vessel. Initially, three of these barge-carrying CB transports will be built. The varied resources of many of our divisions are focused with particular intensity on the problems of anti-submarine warfare. In electronics, we are engaged in such projects as producing airborne displays for the ANU ASW program, creating the next generation of sonar detection and fire control systems, building the AUTEC test range to evaluate all the sonar on all the ships and subs of the British and U.S. navies. A special marine task group is developing design proposals for the DX, the Navy's super destroyer and one of the principal weapons in the struggle for undersea supremacy. We will build 20 attack submarines, a new class specially designed to seek out and destroy enemy subs. The design of the quiet sub, another step forward in the submarine's evolution, also is our commission. Problem. Supply the Midwest's builders with the finest construction materials, economically and on time.
Solution? Total capabilities. Efficient production. Precise timing and coordination. Cement. At this moment, more perishable than whipped cream is one example. The mix is controlled by computer, exactly to customer specifications. We follow split-second schedules to get it on the job. No sooner, no later than requested. Builders need steel, tons of it. We produce lime for steel, tons of it. We're the largest in the nation. The raw material comes from our own quarries. Automation advances the complex job of making the product right. The steel industry, now using oxygen furnaces, demands higher quality calcium lime than ever before. Top grade lime is also used for a spectrum of non-metal applications, ranging from animal feeds to water purification. We dig coal for steel, and we dig it for electric power. We dig it from the surface and from deep inside the earth. This is the largest producer of deep mine coal in the state of Illinois. With reserves of about one billion tons, its lifespan thrusts far into the future. This is the big wheel. Dimensions, 120 by 46 by 300 feet. We use it for strip coal mining. It can take a 30 foot high chunk of earth in one bite and move enough earth in an hour to fill nine farm silos. The stripping shovel eats 70 cubic yards at a scoop to lay bare the coal seam. And out comes the coal. Moving on to be automatically purified, graded, sized, and sorted to a variety of specifications. But what of the torn up land left in the wake of our big brute force machines? Before we took the coal from these 18,000 acres, they were idle, unproductive fields. We call the project New Lands. Pre-planned reclamation. A policy we've followed for more than 30 years. Problem. Perhaps the greatest problem of all to continue in the forefront of accomplishment into the future. The challenges of the 60s will be the solutions of the 70s and 80s. Weight in aircraft, noise in submarines, size in electronics. We are already at work on these and other projects. At the moment, many of our answers are only paper. But in the 70s and 80s, they will emerge as finished products in steel and aluminum, titanium and boron, and even newer materials that do not yet exist. We are working on tomorrow's problem today, discovering new ways of harnessing energy to engineering in all our fields of activity. <laughs> 